Do you ever think to yourself that we just don't have enough time to do the things that we want to do? Personally, I think about this all the time, whether it's my never ending to do lists, my unaccomplished goals from last year, or the relationships that I would love to invest more time into. Uh, it just feels like the common denominator and the thing that would fix everything is just having more time to just do it all. But after reading this book called Three Days of Happiness, this has significantly shifted my perspective. And I don't think the problem is that we have too little time to work with. I think the issue is that we have too much time on our hands. Let me explain. Welcome to the channel guys, my name is Frank and this is a monthly series I'll be doing called Books and Coffee where I'm going to sit down every single month and go over something interesting that I've read. So let's just jump right into it. In the book, we meet our main character named Kusunoki, who is a 20-something year old man that has always had dreams of doing something great with his life, except he hasn't actually done anything yet. He always had dreams that he would be someone famous or rich, just because at an early age he was very advanced compared to everyone else, but we basically find him at rock bottom and he's scrounging around for money. When he comes across a store that's actually really interesting, you could sell away years of your life for money. Since he still believes that one day he will become someone great or be rich, he figures that the remaining years of his life will actually earn him quite a bit of money. So he's very surprised to find out that the entire rest of his life is basically worthless. So at that point, he just decides to call it quits and sell everything because if it's worthless, it's not really worth living. And so we get to see for the rest of the book how someone lives out the remaining three months of their life. By the end, it gets very emotional. I definitely recommend you bring tissues when you read it. But let's get back to our primary question. How is time the enemy of happiness? Well, as a non-expert on anything psychology, I can give you what I was thinking about while I was reading this book. And the first thing relates to a concept called Parkinson's Law. Parkinson's Law is the idea that work expands to fill the time available for its completion. And usually it's given in the context of productivity or trying to get more done in less time. The classic example is that if you were assigned to write a paper for a class and the teacher said you had a month to do it, a lot of us would just do the entire thing the night before and so it would take us the entire month to write this paper. On the other hand, if you were given one day to write this paper, all of a sudden you get the entire paper written in one day, the same paper. The only thing that changed is the amount of time you were giving to do that specific task. So basically, the more time we have to do something, the more time it will take us to do that thing. How does this relate to happiness? Well, happiness is kind of an abstract thing, right? A lot of the things that will bring us happiness relate to our own personal goals in life that we hope to work on progressively. And the problem with this is that these things don't really have any sort of deadline. And so they can easily turn from active goals that we want into something passive and we just end up drifting along. The bigger issue in all of this is that there actually very much is a deadline to all of these things that we want. It's just that we don't really know when that deadline is. I like to refer to this entire concept as the problem of someday. Someday I will start investing. Someday I will ask that cute girl or guy out. Someday I will start to put my work online. We want to do these things, but at the same time we might feel that we're not ready, or it's just not the right time, or we're just afraid of putting ourselves out there and seeing what other people say. So we just assume that someday things will just work out. In the book, someday has to happen in three months. That's it. Imagine being in that scenario where you had an indefinite amount of years to do something that you really wanted to do and now you have three months to do it. All of a sudden, you find your someday list getting done and why? Well, because of Parkinson's law. If all you have is three months, you start to pay a lot more attention to what you spend your time on because it's that much more valuable to you. And you also don't really care as much about what other people think because like, who cares? You have three months left and you have a lot of things you might wanna do. This all gravitates around this central idea of the book where 60 years of a passive life don't really come anywhere near to the fulfillment that three days of simple happiness can bring you. So let's move on to the second idea of why time might be the enemy of happiness called the Pareto Principle. The Pareto Principle is the idea that to get 80% of the results that you want, all you need to do is put in 20% of the work. For example, if you wanna do really, really good on a test, you're way better off studying the core 20% of what will definitely be on the test, so like the high yield stuff, rather than the 80% of other things that may or may not be on the test. So by doing this and studying with that 20% that will definitely be on the test, we save a ridiculous amount of time and we also do get pretty good results. 
The way this relates to happiness and self-fulfillment kind of relates to how we talked about how we tend to perceive time as unlimited when it is actually not. So when we perceive time as unlimited, we're much more likely to be caught up in working on this 80% of things that don't really give you great results, while we could be spending our time on the 20% that really, really matter to us. There's a great line I like in the book called Essentialism by Greg McKeown that goes something like, the unimportance of practically everything. This phrase is not meant to say that everything is unimportant, but rather that there are very, very few things that are actually extremely important. And so if we focus more, more of our time on those things that are extremely important to us, we're much more likely to be rewarded internally for doing those rather than spending our time in the other 80% that is just not very important and not very self-fulfilling for us. Our main character in the book, Kusunoki, in the beginning, we notice that he's been spending a lot of time in this 80% zone in trying to form friendships with other people. He's been extremely self-absorbed and trying to just become someone that others would admire rather than just being a friend that would be there for other people, which is like the 20% of having a good, healthy relationship with others. This is a big reason why in the beginning of the book, he finds himself with essentially no social safety net of any kind and like we said, at rock bottom. But as he is forced to pay attention to that 20% of activities, that he could be doing to spend his time in a more positive manner, near the end of the book, his social group essentially grows into something that nobody would expect. So those are two concepts that I really think sum up why time can potentially be your enemy. And here are two tips that I've come up with to sort of mitigate this uh, false perception that we have indefinite time to do things. Tip number one is to just take stock of what you are doing. Personally, I like to write down my someday goals and then decide which one of those to scrap, which one of those I can just do now, and then which one of those would take a probably a longer amount of time than the rest. I don't really like goals that are a bit too abstract, like I want to be rich or I want to play an instrument. Both of these don't work for me. First of all, because I want to be rich. Why do you want to be rich? Being rich is usually just a means to an end. So do you want to be rich because you want to buy a house? Do you want to buy a Lamborghini, have some security for your family? You need to make it as specific as possible. In the case of I want to play an instrument, which instrument? Do you want to play for fun? Do you want to play to compete in, I don't know, tournaments if people with instruments do that? I think you need to be as specific as possible because that's the only way you're able to really track progress and know you're headed in like roughly the uh, right direction. In the case of things that you can do now, what's really stopping you. In case you want to start a podcast, you could probably do that with like an hour's worth of your time. You don't need like a thousand dollars to get a bunch of equipment to start a simple podcast. Plus that would suck to like spend a thousand dollars on a bunch of equipment and then you don't like to do the thing. A lot of the time, the biggest obstacle to just start something is like the one hour you need to like sit down and just start working on the thing. If you feel like you're not ready, don't worry. I don't think anyone is ever really ready to do something. I think we just kind of go into things and become ready as we work on it little by little. Personally, I don't feel ready to even have a YouTube channel and here I am. Finally, a quick word on goals that are more like long term. You can probably just break these down into smaller little goals so you can track your progress along. So for example, I want to become a doctor. So then what do I need to do? First, I need to go to college, uh, graduate college, take my MCAT, apply to medical school, go to medical school, etc., etc. I probably wouldn't go straight from just uh, getting in college to I'm gonna be a doctor because then it's kind of scary. You don't have the experience or the training that medical school offers you to have that confidence to be a doctor. So don't, I don't like to think about end goals immediately. Start to think about the progress and how you will evolve along the way to reach that goal at the end. Tip two is to create actual deadlines and stick to them. So thinking back to our story, Kusunoki had a bunch of years to do the things that he wanted to do and never really got anything done. But all of a sudden, when he had three months left to do all the things he wanted to do, things started to get done. You can take advantage of this. You could take advantage of Parkinson's law by just setting deadlines for yourself and sticking to them. This way, if you give yourself a limited amount of time to do something, you're much more likely to do that thing just because you're forcing yourself to sit down and at least start working on it, even if you go past your deadline. Personally, I'm still working on my ideal way to do deadlines, although I will say that to-do lists are 100% uh, part of the ideal strategy for this because they really help you break down things into smaller and smaller goals, so you kind of know that you're heading in the right direction. And as a bonus, if you 
really have a hard time sticking to your own deadlines, you could always have something like an accountability buddy. So for example, for my first video, I had an accountability buddy. I told him that if I didn't publish my first video by a set date, that I would have to pay him $100. And he is $100 poorer to this day and I've published, I don't know, more than 20 videos by now. So I think that's a win-win. Finally, I think I'll just leave you with a quote from the book that I think really sums everything up very well. When I expected to live to 80, I always had that unconscious arrogance of knowing I had 60 more years in me. Now that 60 years had become just three months, I was plagued by an insistence that I always had to do something. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you really enjoyed this video. It was a very nice book to read. If you don't mind, I would love it if you guys could click that like and subscribe button. And you know, let me know in the comments below what you thought of all of this. Anyways, I hope you have a wonderful day and I'll catch you next time. Goodbye.